Hello, I'm Eric Waite, and I'm going to give you 10 reasons why Ardbeg 10 is the best buy Scotch whiskey. Number 10, it's peated. I love peated whiskeys. Now, I know not everybody is into peated whiskey, but if you want something that is going to be chocolatey, if you want something that is going to be reminiscent of perhaps smoking a fine cigar and yet still delivers a lot of fruit and spice character, uh, and then you're going to love peated whiskeys. And if you want to get into peated whiskeys, I can't think of another bottle uh, that I would recommend getting into. Begin your peated journey with the Ardbeg 10. Number nine. It is unchill filtered. Some distillers will chill filter their whiskeys so that if you put ice into it, uh, it won't become cloudy. Or if you add water to it, it won't become cloudy. Or if you make a cocktail out of it, it won't become uh, cloudy. However, people who really, really, really like their whiskeys will typically want them unchill filtered because you won't be stripping away a lot of flavors with filtering. So we want the whiskey at the best it can be, and if it gets a little cloudy when you put an ice cube into it, or if you add a little bit of water, that's fine with us because after all, it's the flavor that really matters. Coming in at number eight, Ardbeg has no added coloring. In Scotland, you can add legally E150 caramel coloring, which is a derivative from a sugar. Supposedly it doesn't add any flavor, but some distilleries will add coloring it to uh, what they think is giving it a more harmonious look to it, uh, bottle to bottle. However, the real reason why is a lot of people associate darker color with more age and hence better quality. But Ardbeg, as you can see there, doesn't add any color. It is sort of a lime green in color, and that's fine with me because I know if they were to put a lot of dark coloring into this 10-year-old, then they're essentially just putting makeup on something which otherwise doesn't really, really need it. If you know your whiskeys, you know about quality of whiskeys, you don't need it to be dark in order to be good. No one has ever said about Ardbeg, oh, if they had just had a little bit more coloring to it, then it would be a better whiskey. Number seven, it's at 46% alcohol by volume. Now, I love cast strength whiskeys. I love to be able to uh, play with it myself, to add a little bit of water, to get it the level that I like it. I like to be able to add an, an ice cube, particularly on hot days. But if you want a whiskey that is good to go the way it is, straight from the bottle, then for me, the 46 to 48 percent level is right on the money. Legally, they have to have at least 40 percent and on average, most whiskeys that I have had at the 40% ABV level, with a few exceptions, have been, I would say, a little disappointing, and you just know it could be so much more if it was a little bit higher. So, uh, the reason, another reason why I like the Ardbeg 10 is because it comes in at at least 46% alcohol by volume. Another reason why I like the Ardbeg 10 is because it has an A statement. Now, Ardbeg makes a lot of non-age statement whiskeys, and I like them all. That's absolutely fantastic. However, we like integrity in our bottles. We like to have as much transparency as possible. They can't put everything that goes into a whiskey on the label, but we like a statement for that reason. And uh, pretty soon, they're actually going to be coming out with an Ardbeg 5 Wee Beastie, and we admire the courage and boldness to put such a low age statement on a whiskey because they know the quality is going to be in the bottle, not just in a number. Number five, it is widely available. Just about any liquor store, any wine and whiskey shop, you can find Ardbeg 10. This is not one in which you have to spend a lot of time searching around on the internet or trying to hunt down on the secondary market to get a bottle. It's a high quality whiskey that is available to everyone. If you're gonna build a whiskey bar and you're gonna put, let's say, 10 bottles in your whiskey bar and just sort of hold to that. So you're gonna wanna want a variety of whiskeys to put in that bar. And perhaps you even want a uh, affordable, a good budget whiskey bar. Then if you want one bottle to be a peated whiskey, this is the one I would go for. Because if you have guests over your house who like peated whiskeys, even if you don't, 
if you have guests over to your house who like peated whiskeys, they're gonna like the Ardbeg 10 and it's not gonna break the bank. Number four, it is consistent. So I've been doing whiskey reviews for four years. Uh, I've been into wine for 20 years. This is my fourth bottle of the Ardbeg 10. So on average, I'm going through one per year. And thus far, I have found these to be consistent and reliable. I know what I'm gonna get when I pick up a bottle of Ardbeg 10. It's gonna have the peat, it's gonna have the punch, it's gonna have that clarity, it's gonna have that uh, range of flavors that I'm looking for that really sort of scratches my itch when I want an easy to drink, affordable, reliable peated whiskey. Number three, it comes in a variety of packages. This is sort of the standard package that you're gonna find in a lot of your whiskey shops. The coolest packaging is the warehouse packaging and it's only probably like an extra five bucks or so. Originally only available uh, in the uh, UK and in Canada, but you can now find these in the United States. If you want this one, maybe you gotta hunt a little bit more, but I still find it's widely available for order online uh, here in the United States. They also have a number of different other bottles. Um, usually they come out around the holidays. So you think Christmas time, you know, uh, you wanna buy gifts for someone. Ardbeg releases some special packages of the Ardbeg 10. One is with a mini of an Oogadol, uh, another is with, with glasses, and another one has uh, the sort of big white bone packaging, uh, sort of a, a nod to uh, the mascot of Ardbeg, the little, the little uh, Jack Russell Terrier uh, dog there. So it's also not only great for you, but it's great as a gift and available in a number of different packages. Coming in at number two, and one of the most important reasons is Ardbeg 10 remains affordable. It has remained in that $46 to $55 range in the United States. So right now, if I emptied this bottle, I could take Uber to a local whiskey shop and grab it. And I know I'm not gonna spend any more than say $50, $55. So, while all the tariffs have been uh, raising prices and uh, it's been really, really challenging in buying Scotch whiskeys, a lot of other bottles that I have bought recently, I've been paying 25% or more. If I'm having them imported, I'm paying almost double the price. Yet, despite all the tariffs and everything else, over the last six years, Ardbeg 10 has remained consistently within a five, not increased any more than say five to $10. And take inflation in consideration and everything else, that is absolutely fantastic. It is the door for those who are just venturing into whiskeys, venturing into beaded whiskeys, and don't want to break the bank and spend too much to take that risk on buying that first peated whiskey. So highly, highly recommend uh, buying the Ardbeg Ted. And of course, the number one reason is it's of high quality. So sometimes I just have this little itch, you know, you're just really in the mood for a particular style of whiskey. We're really, really hankering for a peated whiskey on those cold, particular cold days around the holidays, sitting around the fire, reading a book, listening to uh, music or watching a movie. This is really, really gonna hit the spot. And every time I try a more expensive Ardbeg, one that costs $100, $150, $200, a lot of these new releases that everybody goes bonkers over, including myself, I go back to the Ardbeg 10 and I compare the expensive releases, the committee releases, those sort of one-offs, you know, specialty bottles. I then go back to the Ardbeg 10 and it makes me realize, you know what? Ardbeg 10 is still got it going on. Love those other bottles. They're absolutely fantastic whiskeys, but Ardbeg 10 is still hard to beat for that quality price ratio whiskey. So what do I get on it? Um, the peat and the smoke, a little bit of black pepper. I get the chocolate. I get a lime character to it. Lemon. Maybe a little bit of uh, a guava, but you have to remember that all these characteristics are going to have peat and smoke sort of interwoven with them. That's the other reason why, in terms of the quality of whiskey, this isn't just a smack upside the head with peat and smoke, you're not getting anything else. The flavors and aromas are intertwined uh, with each other. 
Yeah, that's a nice silky mouthfeel. Get the chocolate, you got lime, you got lemon, you got a little bit of sort of a slight tropical character to it. Got the chocolate, got a little bit of saltiness there. Then I get some uh, vanilla and some caramels uh, and candy bar nougat, absolutely fantastic. And with all those characteristics, as I said before, is the peat and smoke interweaving uh, with them. So you're not just getting sort of smoke on smoke, smoke, and having to sort of fight your way through it in order to get to those other characteristics. They are right there. Absolutely spectacular whiskey. And if you watch other reviews of Ardbeg 10, consistently 90 points plus for this whiskey. And I'm going to give this 92 points, 92 points. Absolutely fantastic. Now, those points are also taking into consideration the, the price, right? So if this was a 200 bottle, would I be so generous with the points? Maybe not, but check out some of my other fellow whiskey tubers and see what the kind of scores they give it. And you're going to find they're going to be in the exact same uh, ballpark. Alrighty, that's it for this review. If you subscribe to this channel, I want to thank you very much. If you haven't yet subscribed, but you like watching my videos, subscribe, give me a thumbs up on this video, and to be notified when I go live or post a new video, you're going to want to hit that bell. And if you've had the Ardbeg 10, I want to know what you think of it. Put in the comments down below. If you have any questions, put it down below. If you have any recommendations you want me to give you, let me know. Put it in the uh, comments down below. Until next time, cheers. Hey, don't forget to subscribe and check out these other whiskey videos.